We'll speak uh, with you today about uh, application aware service training and what is it designed for and uh, what is the current status of uh, standardization on, on this topic. So let's first by um, let's, let's start first by a, a quick uh, definition of uh, what we mean by application aware service training. If you have a look at a regular network, you will see we will um, you will find a, a long chain of middle boxes, right? Typically, that could be on a GI LAN or even in a data center. You will find firewall, load balancer, caching, and in a typical network, you have this long chain of devices, and it means that each and every flow have to go in each and every middle box. That's very inefficient because many of the flows shouldn't have to go to all of these boxes, right? And people are thinking about uh, service chaining to make that a bit more efficient so that you can automate you know, placement of uh, middle boxes. But um, it's, it's, in general, it's not application aware. What we'd like to do with application aware service chaining is making sure that only the right flows are going to the right boxes. Typically, in this example, you'd like to have HTTP flow going to uh, load balancing and, and firewall but uh, video might not go to firewall because uh, there is not much uh, threat to find inside videos. So the general idea of application-aware um, uh, service chaining is to build service chain which are subscriber-aware and application-aware, which is not the case today. So service chaining is useful when you want to dynamically deploy boxes and you want to enforce you know, some uh, policies and do some processing on some flows, but certainly not on all the flows. So at the end of the day, if you build a, a, a network with application awareness service chaining, you will be able to, bet to, to get a better optimization of your resources because only the right flows will go to the right uh, middle boxes. And it will make you uh, easier to automate uh, the, net, uh, the, the deployment of services inside the network. So this problem has been uh, taken from different angles by different standard organizations. Uh, we can start by, by, the, by the Etsy, right? So at the Etsy, you know, there is this concept of uh, network services, and it's basically a VNF forwarding graph. So you take several virtual network functions, you connect them with virtual links, and with that you build, uh, uh, you build network services. And what we, what, what we see is that uh, it's very close to service chaining because you have this, uh, this uh, virtual network functions connected with virtual links. So this is mainly something designed at the MANO management and orchestration level at the Etsy. At the ONF, this is as well something which is, uh, which is uh, being discussed, but from a different perspective. Here it's more how you can, um, you can dynamically configure that from the control plane level. And for that, you need to extend the northbound, the northbound interface of, uh, of a controller, but you also need to extend the uh, OpenFlow protocol so that the uh, controller can populate the network infrastructure with the right application uh, level, layer 7 information. So that's uh, something which is currently being discussed as well at the ONF. And if you have a look at the Etsy, people are, are working on that as well. So there is a very uh, active working group called SFC, which stands for Service Function Chaining. And here you have mainly two proposals, one coming from Cisco, it's called NSH. Another one is coming from, uh, from Huawei, it's called SCH. Then you have a bunch of other proposals. The good news is that uh, um, during last IETF in Toronto, it was decided to merge these two different protocols. But basically, the idea is to tag IP packets and to extend IP packets with uh, chain or pass identifier or chain IDs. And this uh, protocol could be NSH, SCH, is a great example of a, it's, it's, a, it's a great place where we could also carry layer 7 information such as application ID or metadata. And, and, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, ta we'll talk more about that. There is also a lot of work currently being done at the, at, at the, in the Open Daylight Foundation and at the open, uh, in OpenStack 
regarding group-based policy, GBP. There are many discussions around GBP right now, and GBP is also all about service chaining and how you have these uh, model-driven model policies, and we are also working on that to make it more application-aware. So, three different perspectives trying to, and three different standard organizations trying to solve a, a similar problem. The good news is that all of that is currently emerging, and the goal of this presentation is to present you how all that articulates with more details. So let's start with, uh, with IETF. So at the IETF, yeah, there is this uh, reference architecture where all packets have to go to what we call a classifier. It's also called service classifier. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? The expo floor will be closing in 15 minutes. My pro my presentation should be shorter than that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, at the IETF, the idea is to have all packets arriving in a classifier. Classifier is a, is a network function that could, be, uh, that could be done in a virtual switch, that could be a separate physical box. But the idea is to say, okay, based on various criteria, could be layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, could be subscriber, could be DPI, different kind of criteria, you will tag IP packets and you will add a new header in front of this IP packet, so it could be NSH, could be SCH, based on VXLAN, could be Geneva, NVGRE, so you have many proposals here. But the idea is to tag these IP packets, and, and then in the data plane, could be physical or could be virtual data plane, instead of uh, routing IP packets based on IP addresses or switching IP address, uh, uh, switching uh, packets based on MAC addresses, you will do uh, chain switching, right? So, and this chain can be defined by an application ID. So suddenly, you have the ability to say, okay, if I see video traffic, I want to go this chain. If I see video traffic, I want to go this chain. And, uh, and, and you have uh, an application-aware network. So that's, that's what we are working on at the IETF, and you have many people working on that at the IETF. And, and this is mainly the service chaining, but taken from the uh, data plane point of view. So typical, ex typical uh, example extracted from, uh, from the IETF draft. So uh, you are adding that in front of, uh, of an IP packet. You have this pass identifier, and this pass can be the result of a rule engine taking into account subscriber ID and application ID. Second level is, um, is this level, right? So this, has been, this graph has been designed by people working at the layer 4 to 7 working group at the ONF, at the Open Networking Foundation. So the idea is to say, okay, we now have this uh, very smart infrastructure which is able to do uh, switching based on chain IDs instead of, uh, instead of IP addresses or MAC addresses. But now you need to populate all the network infrastructure with all this information. And this is where the, uh, the ONF is working. So you have this uh, SDN controller, and one application that could be uh, designed uh, on top of this SDN controller is an SFC controller, SFC for service function chaining. So you have REST APIs where you can say, okay, if I see HTTP, I want this chain. If I see uh, audio, I want this chain. So you, pop you, you, you are an application sitting on, on the north of this uh, of this uh, infrastructure will be able to configure uh, the underlying infrastructure using a regular uh, SDN, uh, SDN controller. And then you have the SDN controller using OpenFlow extension, which, which will populate the physical infrastructure or the uh, virtual infrastructure using OpenFlow or using OpFlex-like protocols. So you have different options here, but uh, the idea is to say, okay, here you have REST APIs where you describe the chains, and here you have the, the controller doing, you know, computing how that, sh that should be deployed then in the physical or virtual network, and using an OpenFlow extension or an OpFlex protocol, you are deploying that into the underlying infrastructure, and you use IETF, SFC, uh, uh, it could be NSH or SCH, to do the physical switching uh, or virtual switching of IP packets. So here is a typical extension that could be done uh, in, uh, in, uh, in OpenFlow, but OpenFlow is just an option. There are other options to do that, 
So why? So if you take a typical open flow table, you will find you know uh, Ethernet, uh, Ethernet is a regular you know 14 uh, criteria, but you could certainly add others like the application IDs and build uh, open flow rules based on layer seven criteria instead of uh, layer two, layer, th layer three, or layer four criteria. So these, these are very interesting extensions that could be added to OpenFlow or to uh, virtual switches and that have to be populated using OpenFlow protocols. So this is the second layer of this uh, architecture. Third layer is what is being done at the Etsy, so it could be well, I'm, say, I'm speaking about Etsy, but actually, you have similar stuff uh, happening with GBP uh, for, for, for OpenStack. People in Neutron are also working on that. So, so basically here, what we need to say is to explain is how you build. So if we use uh, the Etsy terminology, it's network services. So a network service is a combination of several virtual network functions, and they are all uh, connected together using virtual links. And with each and every virtual link, you have a policy which is coming, right? Saying, I want this QoS, I want this security policy, and so on. And uh, at the end of the day, that's very close to service chaining. So the good news is that, uh, as you might know, uh, we, are we are about to end the phase one of the Etsy. We are about to enter in the phase two of Etsy, NFV, ISG. And in this phase two, we are now defining how uh, this uh, uh, Etsy orchestration will uh, be interconnected with, uh, with OpenFlow infrastructure. So there are new, they call that liaison group, which are currently being set up to, have, uh, to, to, to define how the uh, man management and orchestration layer of the Etsy should interact with, uh, with, uh, with people at, at the ONF. And uh, these are definitely this uh, SFC, you know, southbound interface, which is a northbound interface of the controller, which is currently being defined here. Okay? Typically, that will probably be REST APIs. And then here you will have OpenFlow or OpFlex protocols being used to populate that down to the infrastructure. So here it's a typical uh, example. It's extracted from the uh, NFV uh, draft, right? So you have uh, endpoints, you have the network functions that, that are virtual network functions, but then you have this, vir uh, this uh, uh, physical infrastructure or virtual infrastructure which is under that. So, so that's very interesting because we see uh, at the end of the day, you know, we are coming, that, that's very funny because that, I, I think that at, at the beginning, you have three different standard organizations taking similar problems from three different angles. But what we see right now is all of that is currently converging into a unified infrastructure to be able to do uh, application-aware uh, service chaining and service chaining. So that's very interesting to see all this, uh, this trend where three different things are converging to a unified view and a unified model. So if we have a look at, mo in mo at that in more details, so what are the uh, important working groups working on that? So you will find at OpenStack, so you, are, you have many people working on GBP, group-based policy. So it's a um, simplified neutron, if you will, or more something making the network more uh, policy-driven. So, so, so there are many discussions on this topic there. Then there is the uh, Etsy NFV Management and Orchestration Group, which is very important. And in this group, there is a subgroup called the VNF Forwarding Graph, which is all about you know, how you connect all these uh, virtual network functions. So that, this is really for the management and orchestration layer. Then if we have a look at this uh, controller level, uh, there, there is a lot, bit of work being done currently at the ONF. It's mainly uh, you know, people working on the, the NBI, the northbound interface, how you configure these uh, 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 service chains using REST APIs. So right now, people are talking about that. But then also, uh, you have people working on the extensibility working group, which is all about how you extend the open flow protocol so that it's richer and it is able to carry and to populate the underlying infrastructure with chain information and layer 7 information. And there is also an interesting working group here, which is the layer 4 to 7 working group, where people are defining use cases and how middle boxes are being plugged into an open flow infrastructure. So this is, uh, this is currently uh, work currently being done. And then if we have a look at the infrastructure level, 
you will find the IETF. So for service function chaining is a, is, is a key working group right now. A lot of work is, is currently being done in this working group at the IETF. But there is also the NVO3, which is about uh, overlay network. So these are protocols uh, like, uh, this is where we define protocols like VXLINE, NVGRE, uh, Geneve, and all of that to be able to extend these uh, IP packets with chain information, also known as pass identifiers. So this is, I, I call that the unified model because this is a result of three different standard organizations converging to a unified model. That's, that's very important. And that's a good news to see that these groups are working all together. We can speak a bit about uh, projects and products. So you will find products like uh, open source product in green and, and commercial product in black. So, so you, you will find all the uh, usual companies right here, typical, uh, well, Alcatel Lucent, HP, Huawei, all these guys are, uh, are working in these domains. You know, here for the controller, Open Daylight, very active. Uh, Contrail, working on service chaining. HP, with commercial product like Van, working on that. NEC, all these guys are, are involved in this, uh, in this uh, um, control plane layer. And here you will find, you know, Huawei, Cisco, all these guys working on the infrastructure. Okay, then there is a very, now that we have this unified view, you have um, key questions that are still remaining and, 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 and there are a lot of debates right now. Where, is, where should the intelligence be, right? So if we assume that uh, we have a model-driven management, meaning that you define policies, right, using GBP, group-based policies, to describe the way communication should be described, then this could be, uh, the, the way rules are, are then computed and executed could be done in different places. So you have people who say, okay, that should be done at OpenStack level, okay? You have other people saying, okay, GBP should just, you know, be, should just, uh, rule, GBP rules and policies should be stored at OpenStack, but then that should be done at the controller level. Could be, could be Open Daylight or could be another controller. And then that should be converted into OpenFlow at the controller level. And then you have a third model, which is to say, okay, you have GBP here, you have similar GBP rules, and that should be, uh, uh, and, and, and you, have, you should have all the policies directly being stored in the infrastructure. And that's why the OpFlex protocol has been de designed by, by Cisco and, and is now proposed at the, uh, at the IETF. It's to say, okay, the intelligence should remain here, and all these uh, complex rules should go from the top to the bottom, but then computed and executed at the bottom. So you have debates here about where the intelligence should be, and you probably understand um, there is a, a lot of, uh, of uh, implication with that. Okay, so a few words on what we are doing at Cosmos to make all this service chaining infrastructure application aware. So few key contributions we did and we are working on. GPP. So we are uh, making classifiers application-aware, which is not the case today because they are mainly layer two, three, four driven. Uh, Etsy, SDN, liaison group. So it's a joint group between, between the OpenFlow and the Etsy. So we are involved there and in a few proof of concept. We will work in, uh, at the ONF to make that uh, more application-aware and design how we should populate the underlying infrastructure. And we have uh, a few, dra few drafts being uh, signed by, by our company here to make uh, SFC more application-aware. So these are our key contributions to make this infrastructure application-aware. So as a summary, you know, I think the, the, the reason for this presentation was just to explain service chaining is, is, is becoming a key concept because it will be a new way to design networks instead of having a chain of services. People will have that more like as a hub, you know, with a service classifier and then you will divert only some flows to some virtual functions. So that will, that will be absolutely key in the future, both for service providers and data centers. It requires a tremendous amount of standardization to make that possible because you make uh, different solutions interoperate and it requires application awareness that is lacking today if you want to make sure that you save uh, resources and you only send the right flows to the right middle boxes. 
I have 16 seconds, so <laughs> I don't know if you have uh, questions. No? Thank you.